Nice to greet you. I am Dr. Muhammad Jassim Muhammad, dental implant surgeon. Today I'd like to share with you and brief you about my new publication, which is a Progressive Implant Building of Maxillary Science Perforation Dental Implant, which is a case report. Hope it will be beneficial to you. Thank you. So let's start with the patient history. The patient attended to our clinic. She was complaining for missing 2.5 and 2.6 and the implant was proposed to the patient. Operative note, under local anesthesia, crystal incision was done to expose the bone at 2.5 and 2.6 area. A taper implant with 4 mm width and 10 mm length, superline dentium was used. Bone osteotomy was done according to the manufacturer's recommendation. During the preparation of the first molar socket, the resistance to drilling was decreased and there was a drop of the drill inside that indicates sinus floor penetration. Both implants were placed approximately 1 mm subcrystally and resonance frequency analysis measurements were taken. Loading of the implant. If we look at the 2.6 implant, we immediately loaded with temporary abutment and also composite cooling was used for the crown. If we look at the picture in the middle, we can see the crown is totally out of occlusion. If we look at the X-ray or peripical X-ray on the left, we can see the fixture penetrating the maxillary sinus. Progressive implant loading, or I call it implant eruption. After one month, the patient should come again and we modify the crown, we enlarge the crown. After two months, still, we can have to modify the crown, enlarge the crown and also increase the height and the 2.5 implant we can see here is exposed and healing abutment placed. If we look at the reading of the resonance frequency analysis measurement for the both implant, the first molar which is immediately loaded and the second molar which is delay loaded, we can see the measurement or the average of the measurement is 67 for the first molar and the second molar is 73. After one month, there is an increase in the first molar into 71 and again after two months there's still increase of the implant uh, or immediately loaded implant in 72 after three months still there is an increase into 75 while we can see that delay loaded implant or the second premolar we can see the fluctuant there was a decrease after two months into 72 from 73 to 71 and again there is uh, uh, the implant will return back to its uh, normal uh, reading which is uh, 73 at the time of the same implant placement so we go to the result and discussion we can see all the risk factor in this case but still there is successful the drawback of this case is the maxillary science involvement of perforation immediately loaded implant we can do it immediately to the 2.6 or perforated implant moderate implant stability is not high at the time of implant placement and also the important factor is poor bone density at the posterior of the maxilla. So what's the reason of the success? The reason of success we work on the all the factor. The factor which is the first one engaging the apex of the implant with the sinus floor and the sinus floor is hard dense bone. Second progressive lo imp uh, implant loading which is important to give the chance for the bone to grow and be mature. Third placing implants subcrystally to engage more cortical bone and get more stability. Fourth, aggressive implant design, which is important mechanically, so that the, uh, the implant will engage more with the bone and also increase the surface area. And the last, and uh, is, uh, SLI surface, which is also important as a chemo tactic for the osteoblast. So the implant eruption, which is a new concept that invented by me, by the author, and this concept originated from the tooth eruption. As we know that during eruption, the tooth has a partially developed root and when it's finally erupt into occlusion, we can see only three quarters of the root has been formed. So I took this concept and applied it in a dental implant and I make it as implant eruption into the oral cavity by progressively increasing the crown width and height. This process allows time for the bone to grow and mature with the increased loading stimuli. Resulting in implant stability will be increased for sure. In other words, I call this technique as implant eruption. Thank you.